every single morning, the first thing I do, like the moment I get out of bed, is I go to the bathroom and flip on the light switch. Not only does going to the bathroom allow me to, you know, do the business and other morning routine stuff, but the act of turning the lights on when I'm feeling sleepy and tired and my eyes are not fully awake, it gives me like the shock of energy. And I feel energized and ready to start the day. And it's it's like by flipping on the switch to turn on the lights, I'm flipping on the switch to turn on my body. And that's what I'm going to share with you in this video. This is a summary of Andrew Huberman's video on how to use light to optimize health. And I distilled the video down to its most valuable and key points and synthesized it with my own personal experience and actionable steps that you can literally do as soon as you finish watching this video. The first thing that you have to understand about light is that light is a form of energy and energy impacts the things around it, meaning that energy has the ability to change the way other things behave. They can cause reactions to cells of different things like fruits, plants, machines, devices, and even our own body. And light comes in different forms of wavelength, and each wavelength is a different color. That's what color is. Color is light. And these wavelengths come in a spectrum of different colors. That goes from long wavelength lights, so things like infrared, and short wavelength lights, which are things like UVB lights. Long wavelength lights have the ability to penetrate tissues and affect our body on a deeper level. That is why infrared light is used for various healing abilities like skin therapy, um, scar removals, laser surgery, things that have a lasting impression and can alter the appearance of skin and other surfaces. Something like microwaves are a good example of long wavelength light because the energy of the light causes a reaction in the cells of the food and causes the food to heat up. On the other hand of the spectrum, you have short wavelength light, things like ultraviolet blue light or UVB light for short. And this is the kind of light that I think is the most essential for optimizing everyday health because this is the kind of light that optimizes your hormone levels. This is the one that you should be prioritizing. And similar to long wavelength light, it has the ability to change the way our body behaves. However, it does not have the ability to penetrate our tissues as well as long wavelength light, which means it's more safe compared to long wavelength light making contact with your skin. Um, obviously, there are still safety hazards that come with this like sun damage and sunburn, but nevertheless, sunlight is one of the most powerful and healthy things you can give to your body. And in fact, I might even argue that it's more important than nutrition in some aspects. You want to make sure you're getting sunlight through your eyes and through your skin as safely as you possibly can. This is something you've probably already heard because this is becoming extremely popular in the self-improvement community, which is a good thing because I am myself, I'm starting to see how important getting sunlight is not just for our mood, uh, our sleep, focus, and energy throughout the day, but also because it's literally part of our biology to get as much sunlight as we possibly and safely can. You know, ever since the start of humanity, getting tons of sunlight was the norm for our primal ancestors like the cavemen, old kingdoms like Rome, the Persians, Mongols, the Chinese dynasty. Every period of time in history, our, our ancestors were bathing, absolutely bathing in sunlight. They had to farm, hunt, provide for their family outdoors. But in our modern day society, this all seems different. It's becoming normal to stay indoors, to work indoors, to have fun indoors, to socialize indoors, to exercise indoors. Like, it's being framed as weird to start doing a bunch of push-ups in public. Which, now that I think about it, is kind of awkward. But, <laughs> and I know I'm going on a bit of a side tangent, but you get what I'm saying. Getting sunlight is one of the most beneficial 
things that we can do for our health. So the so for the actual information that you need <laughs> that you need to know and that you can uh, apply to your life straight away is get as much sunlight as you safely can through your eyes and through your skin in the morning and midday for at least 10 to 30 minutes. This is what Andrew Huberman calls sunlight viewing. Don't do sunlight viewing wearing sunglasses, blue light blockers through windows or windshields as they filter out some of the sun rays that you need. Contact glasses and lenses are okay and are actually beneficial because they help focus the sun's rays onto the part of your eye that actually perceives it. If you can, wear as little amount of clothing as you safely, appropriately, and culturally can. Avoid sunscreen unless you are prone to sun damage, have sensitive skin, or have any diseases that the sun will provoke, or if you are under the sun for longer periods of time. Some benefits of sunlight received through the eyes are it wakes you up in the morning because it suppresses melatonin that is released while you're sleeping. This is because light powerfully inhibits melatonin. And that's why at the start of the video, I flip on the light the first thing I do upon waking just to wake myself up and to suppress those melatonin sleepy hormones. It improves mood, increases focus and energy throughout the entire day, regulates your circadian clock and improves sleep and some benefits of receiving sunlight through your skin increases testosterone and estrogen increases the amount of healthy eggs produced in females enhances female attractiveness so the perceived attractiveness of females by males and yes you heard that right that's exactly what huberman said also i'm assuming assuming so don't hold me on to this i'm assuming since he said the amount of healthy eggs produced in females is increased through sunlight exposure to the skin, then sunlight exposure to the skin will increase the amount of healthy sperm produced in males. Now, again, this is an assumption. I'm not sure if it's true or not, or maybe he did mention this and I just didn't catch it. Also, those are just some of the benefits. There are many, many more. Those are just the ones I listed. Um, feel free to do your own research. I'm sure he has some other resources that he provides in his website and his channel and his podcast that you can view for yourself. And some disclaimers and things to know about light that you should avoid. Make sure you are not staring directly at the sun because this will damage your eyes. Just make sure you are at least outside and exposing yourself to daylight. Even if it's cloudy outside, you will still get enough sunlight. However, you might need to stay outside longer. Avoid bright lights as much as you can at night and in the middle of the night because it disrupts your sleep. Obviously, if you wake up in the middle of the night and need to do something, just use the minimum amount of light needed to do whatever you need to do. Don't wear sunglasses, blue light blockers, or hats when doing your sunlight viewing. Don't do your sunlight viewing through a window or windshield. Use sunscreen if you need it. Expose as much skin as you appropriately, safely, and culturally can, meaning wearing shorts or tank tops if possible. Obviously, not walking around naked. And that is pretty much everything for this video. I hope you found it valuable and interesting, and I encourage you to apply as much of the information as you can to your life. If it means you have to rewatch the video to remind yourself of some of the of some of the tools and protocols, feel free to do so. Some other resources from Huberman will be in the description. And if you find these summaries valuable, I have a bunch of other Andrew Huberman summaries and a relevant one to this video is my sleep video which will be linked somewhere here and I am trying to branch out to other podcasts to summarize and synthesize as well. I am currently watching a ton of Ali Abdal's Deep Dive, Chris Williamson's podcast, A Diary of a CEO. But if there's any other self-improvement podcast you enjoy, let me know. I will look into it. And with that being said, be the best version of yourself.